What's up everybody? Welcome to another music making tutorial. I am Cloromo and today I'm going to be talking to you about the Vintage Graphic EQ, which is also part of the Vintage EQ collection that Apple Logic Pro X's 10.4 introduced in this latest update. And the benefit of this EQ in particular for us beat makers more than anything, which is what I want to focus more in this video, is to get that punchy sound, that punch in the gut sound. And with that in mind, then I would recommend that you use this more on drums and bass, you know, more uh, on the lower end type of instruments. But it's very versatile plugin and it serves for many other things as you're gonna see. So with that out of the way, let's get right into Logic Pro X. So this is how the plugin looks. For those of you that haven't uh, been paying attention or haven't seen previous videos of mine, just as a recap, you access that by going to your IOFX plugins area, going to EQ, Vintage EQ Collection, and there's the Graphic EQ. I, in my previous video, spoke about the Vintage Console EQ, so if this is the first time you're watching me, go to the previous video and watch that out so you can see how that compares. And in that video, I gave a an overview of this, which is available on the three vintage EQs. But just as a recap, and for the benefit of those that are watching me for the first time, very simple here. It's a very simple plugin, as you can see. Not not many things happening here. You have your output area with an overdrive, which is gonna give that. Um, color and saturation to your output signal and then your model is either going to be the the one that's default for the eq plugin that you're using or you can combine it with the other two and then your phase can be either natural or linear which will for linear let you also use this plugin as a mastering tool and what do we have here it's very, very simple. We only have a tuner and then we have 10 bands that you can either boost or cut by 12 decibels. That's all you have. Now, what's the main reason that the graphic EQ gives you that punch in the gut sound or it's a little bit better and lets you do things that other EQs doesn't let you do? It's a very simple term which is known as proportional Q. For those of you that haven't seen or haven't watched any other EQ videos or are starting with this, the Q is nothing more than your frequency bandwidth. So each one of these bands will have a Q associated with it and that's your bandwidth of each of the bands. Imagine that as I move this up and down, I create a curve, right? Let's imagine that if I boost this up, I have a bell-shaped curve your Q is going to determine how wide that band is and how wide that band is and how et cetera, et cetera. Now, proportional means that as you cut uh, or, or boost, that bandwidth is going to grow or shrink proportionally to the amount of boosting that you do. And as such, when you do very high uh, and extreme boost, you're going to have... Uh, a narrower band and so it's going to work the same way in the opposite direction and then as you go more towards the middle you're going to have a wider band so that you have a resultant smoother curve in the end the vintage graphic eq is based on a classic mixing console module eq which is known as the api 560 and everything that i just said before it's what applies to it it's this plugging is mimicking that one you should be seeing a graphic here on the on the left with that so now i'm just going to demo this on the same beat that i had in the previous video just to give you a quick feel of what you can do again very simple to understand this tuning parameter here is just going to let you or you're going to be very useful to match your um your EQ bands to your key. So as you make this move up and down, your bands are going to also grow or shrink proportionally to that. And let me just bring it back to zero and let's just play this with the 
equalizer on let's move some settings around so I want to first boost that lower end But I also want to boost some of the higher end. Actually, no, I'm going to do more of the mid-high to give more presence to the snare. But you don't lose that punch sound, that punch in the gut sound from the lower end. Obviously, if I if I were to boost the higher of the highest bands, I'm going to give more presence to the hi-hats. Now I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to add some overdrive there too. Pretty simple. That's all you, you need to know here as far as uh, what you can and cannot do with this plugin. If, if you can visualize it from the your typical channel EQ, right? What I'm doing is just doing this. But as I go through the whole frequency spectrum, so I'm just ha I just have 10 bands in here, which gives me more control over what curves I can do uh, across the whole spectrum, as opposed to the, the typical channel EQ, which is gonna let you manipulate the cue in a less proportional way and cover more and with your shelving cue bands it's gonna let you uh go deeper and all that and with your band sweeps and your uh filter passes but this is pretty good it's pretty um easy to understand and get into and that's pretty much it that's that's all there is to it this is, so that makes it a, a shorter video than usual if you stick around i'm just gonna say a few things to finalize the video in regards to the uh api 560 which uh so again you should have seen a picture here of the of the hardware version of it and it's going to look exactly like this so the api 560 is just a an original hardware console eq that was developed in the 19 in 1969 and not only does it give us the advantage of achieving again vintage sound but it's a very versatile uh, type of plugin and it's very easy to set up and in the hardware version the real life version it's it's also versatile because you can mount it to a lot of rack settings and, and all that good stuff and moreover talking technically of what it can do the 10 precision eq bands make this eq ideal for signal sweetening and room tuning so also makes it a great companion to a parametric eq so again the main portion of it or what sells this eq is that proportional q setting and that's pretty much the heart behind it when what lets you achieve the sound that you can achieve with this particular plugin and that's all i had for this video and i'm gonna cut it for now in the next video then we're gonna talk about the tube eq which is the last of the eq plugins of the vintage eq collection and from there i'm gonna move into again other little things that have been introduced in the 10.4 update we are giving you a little bit more demo and a little more history behind it going to google search for that api 560 learn a, bit, a little bit more about it on your own that's in my opinion always very important to do so that you don't only just look at it and move parameters around but you know where it comes from what it's supposed to do what it's supposed to achieve uh, and experiment it for yourself and compare it and Confirm yourself and not just take my word for it. Although I'm doing this obviously for you to learn and based on, on my experience on it. And I know I'm going to be using this plugin a lot or I hope to do so. So if you are watching me for this first time and you like this, please support me by subscribing to my channel, Clormo. And if you have other plugins that you want to share, 
EQ plugins in particular, free ones, commercial ones, doesn't matter. Leave a comment on this video and let us know what you're using. And if you have compared to these other plugins in the vintage EQ collection and should we try them? Should I try them? And I'll do it. And if you want to keep up to date with everything else that I'm doing, just visit me at chloromoindustries.com. I hope to see you there sometime. You can leave me comments. You can buy beats. You can download beats free for free. You can subscribe to my mailing list and keep up to date with everything that I do. I'll see you next time. Peace out, people.